and we're streaming on YouTube and we can all go back and have a look at it later. It will be there available. The link will be available. Um, to remind you to put yourself on mute. Um, and if you want to speak or vote or second a motion or keep, uh, move a motion, just make sure that your hand is up close to your face so that I can see it um, and call you out so that uh, we can make sure that um, Trish sees us. Uh, welcome, Walter. Um, uh, just also the staff is all there just because we don't see them. They are still there. They're, they're muted and they'll come up with their video and their pictures uh, when it's their turn to talk. Okay. Anybody have any questions on, on it? Everybody's comfortable with Zoom? Thanks for agreeing to do Zoom. Uh, Trish and I had chatted about there's a few things that we do need to clean up and move forward and a, and a really good conversation that we need to have. So if I can get a confirmation of the agenda, but before I do that, um, we were looking at the agenda and because we only have Heather, I'm just looking at my agenda here, till um, seven, if everyone's okay, we're going to take the other business, other business item number 11, the music in the park, and we're going to pump it in behind Zare Insurance so that we can have that discussion quick while we still have Heather. Is everybody okay with that change to the agenda? Yeah? Okay, so can I have a mover to confirm the agenda? Bert? Seconder? Someone? Heather? Good, and everyone agrees? Everyone vote, put your hand up so I can see it. We're all good? All right. Anyone have any pecuniary? Anybody have anything they, are we repaying you today, Bert, or anything? I don't think so. There's no, there's no financial report. So no, I'm still um, trying to get my agenda. <laughs> okay. So yeah, no, I don't believe we do have a financial today, Bert. So we should be okay there. No one with any other uh, pecuniary interest or anything? No. Okay. So um, if I can get you, um, Carla, to bring in um, Zare Insurance for us, he's going to give a quick overhaul and update just to bring um, Dustin up to snuff as what we've been talking about was there and so that we can finally make a full board decision and we can let them move on because they've been a little while trying to get this going but when they gave their presentation to us we've now had new board members and we wanted to make sure that everybody was right up with what the rest of us knew so um, Drew's here and we'll let him give us uh, the quick ones over. Hi, Drew. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, so just to recap uh, where we are at with the uh, BIA group that we set up with Zero Insurance uh, by Economical, the insurance company for a group home and auto insurance program. Uh, back in October 2019, we initially presented on the idea and uh, had a PowerPoint meeting up at the golf course. Uh, the following month in November, we in attended a meeting to clarify a few things, notably that the board's not endorsing our brokerage specifically over any other shops in town, but uh, rather facilitating access to these rates for its members. Um, from there, we signed a letter of opportunity appointing us <clears throat> and completed a group profile application with Economical. And then Economical approved that group in February with a 10% discount on property and a 10% discount on the auto. Um, and for the members who are new, just a summary of what group home and auto insurance is. Um, better profitability is shown to be achieved by insurer when insureds are part of a, a defined group, such as an employee group. And so the group and home and auto program allows greater discounting and uh, stability and rating by the company. And so it's, it's a uh, additional benefit you, businesses can add to their employee benefits package. And the Mitchell BIA assumes no liability. There's no cost or additional administration uh, demanded by the BIA. And the participation is optional to all the different businesses involved. And uh, most national home and auto group programs are serviced 
service through a call center while we're locally owned and operated. And that's something that I wanted to uh, reemphasize is that this is a group program available locally for people. And uh, because lots of people have groups through various associations, uh, I myself have one available through an alumni, um, through a school I attended, but those groups are usually serviced through a call center away in Toronto at a national level. And uh, while our group is available and serviced locally and uh, locally owned and operated, which is nice. And lastly, where we were at kind of uh, was some decisions to be made on uh, our marketing and how we want to be, how you want us to communicate with group members. And so um, we there provide all of the marketing for your approval. And uh, the typical marketing for one of our groups can include, and uh, you can pick exactly how we, uh, what we include, but uh, they can include brochures, email ads, um, notes in a BIA newsletter directly from the BIA, electronic ads on Facebook, and posters for lunchrooms or bulletin boards of individual businesses. You can include it in an employee orientation package. We can do on-site quoting events and attend or sponsor social events of some kind. And the last thing we did, um, I discussed with Trish, is a, a contest. We usually do some sort of contest and we thought it would be a, a cool idea to do a quote draw for BIA bucks to get some money back into the uh, the hands of the businesses that'll be members of the program. So we would, uh, members would qualify for the BIA buck draw by completing a quote. And uh, we'd do that probably monthly to start out, but we just kind of put a pause on that until there's a, some actual awareness of the group and uh, we get the board's approval. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on, I think. Were there some additional questions? All right, my computer was a little slow there for a sec. Um, so what we'll do, um, does anyone have any questions for Drew, especially maybe looking more at Dustin since you weren't in the very first uh, initial stuff. Do you have any questions for Drew at all? You're good. Anybody else have any questions for Drew? No, yes, no, okay. All right, so what we'll get is um, a motion to approve their marketing plan um and we can then discuss how we want them to communicate trish did you want to pop on here there you are um hey guys yeah so i just wanted to reiterate that basically what drew's looking for today is just um confirmation that the board is okay with using you know brochures maybe in our new membership packages or the ability to go door to door um and then we could put an ad in our newsletter so he's just looking for direction on what would the board like to see for final decisions so then they can start approaching businesses and the employees of excuse me of the businesses as well so right and so is everybody with what drew's talked about everybody's comfortable with that they're okay to support their plan they're going to do it it's really no work for us it's just uh we're all That's okay right. with that yep yep so that uh, we'll take that motion from uh, Dustin and then from Bert, Trish, and uh, have that or Drew. Off you go. Awesome. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Good night. Thank, thanks for your patience with us as we muddle through this. It was our first time, sort of. Oh no worries. Coming on here, yeah, Jeff. Thanks. Take care. Oh, hang on, Drew. Wait one sec. Oh, Jeff. No, it's okay. Uh, it's good? not for Drew. Okay. And I just wanted to pop back. I have too many notes on my desk here. I did miss our um, approval. Okay, we're good, Drew. Sorry, it wasn't for you. Thank All you right. again. Thanks, guys. Take care. I uh, missed our approval of the minutes for the March 11th, um, 2020. And we should have done that first because Drew was business arising from those minutes. Um, we'll just backtrack that. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Did anyone have any questions, concerned? Heather? Uh, seconder for that? Bert, thank you. Sorry about that. Zare uh, Insurance was actually business arising from that, so I apologize. Um, and we got that a bit backwards. 
Um, next, uh, if you don't mind, we're going to pop the music in the park up and have a discussion. Jeff? Sherry, can I just say that um, we think we have Brent in the waiting room and we're just going to okay. try to add him to the call. Yes, please. Um, and uh, we just don't recognize the name on the call. So we're going to try, we're going to ask Carla to add him to the call. Um, and I think, Carla, if we can add the phone uh, number to the call and see if it's a phone in. Good. And we'll just confirm then if this is Brent when we get a connection. Yep. Oh, hi, Brent. Hi. And Brent, are you tr also trying to connect with a Samsung phone? Yeah. Okay, so we can give you both connections. Would you like the second one as well? Sure. Okay, Carly, you can connect the Samsung as well and we'll be away. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Can you hear us okay, Brent? Yeah. Okay, so um, so far we just finished up with their insurance. Drew, Drew just gave a quick overhaul um, to bring us back on board with what they're doing and we approved and allowed them to move on with their marketing. Um, so now we're just, uh, we've changed our agenda just so slightly. We we're going to take our other business from, uh, the bottom of the page up till now, cause we only have Heather on with us till 11. So our other business is music in the park. We need to have a quick discussion on, um, where we're at with music in the park. What's your thoughts? Dustin? When are they going to start lifting the bands? Do we know? Because it's illegal until then, right? Right. At this point, there's no gatherings more than five people. Um, I do believe there's going to be an announcement tomorrow um, about the stage, stage one, where they're going with it all. Um, I did hear today that um, the CNE has canceled for August. I, I, I don't have a lot of faith that they're going to be letting large gatherings happen. Like, I think... I hate to say that even the fair it's like could be on the chopping like I know they canceled the Kirkton fair. Um, yes, and they've, canceled, they've canceled Zurich Bean Fest, which is before us, and they just canceled the C and E, which is the week before us. I'm yeah, I don't have a lot of faith in it either. Um, like all of my twenty twenty weddings are canceled now. Yeah. Like all they're all done. Right. Like no one is even try so like it's kind of gambling if you want to do it still. I feel like our event is not something that needs a whole lot of organizing necessarily. You know what I mean? Like we're not, we have our bands booked. I think if we cancel them and then they all of a sudden lift everything in July and we can do August, I don't think it's going to be a hard call to get them to come back. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because yeah, like all that. their gigs have been canceled, right? So so do you want to maybe just like touch base with all the bands and say like tentatively we'll just go by what like as long as they're okay with knowing that we'll just go by what are the guidelines or the uh, the restrictions are. Yeah, and I can between Trish and I we absolutely can touch base with all the music and and just they know right. Yeah, and then I I, ha I had an idea and like I don't want to dive into it too much right now because I think um, it'll be better for another time. But um, doing some sort of like a it's, it's kind of a big concept doing a drive-in theater um, with uh, somewhere outdoors. So I got a screen, a projector and all that stuff. I think it'd be a good idea to replace it. That was a thought I was having. Um, yep. You need a large parking lot. Um, and I was looking into the radio transmitters that you need to get because that would just broadcast all the cars. And it's, there's a lot of stuff to it. But that, anyways, that's the general gist of if we want to replace it with something, that's something I have been thinking about. And we can dive into another time. Okay. Yeah. And we have some other ideas. I just had a message here um, that we could maybe do August and September again, like we did last year, although it gets yep. dark in September, but we could, we could tentatively cancel July at this point with the intent that we hopefully can do something in August. Mm -hmm. and we, we could even do Labor Day weekend. I mean, if the fair is canceled and for some reason everything comes back out, there's mm -hmm. lots of time. Heather, do you have yeah, thoughts on this? No, I, I, I agree. I, I think we need to, and like you said, the, those bands aren't going to be going somewhere else, right? So I think we can put them on hold. We haven't lost any, we haven't paid them any, any deposits or anything that, no. that, that we would lose. Um, no. Yeah, I, 
that that would be my thought it's okay so what we'll do for now is we'll have ha we'll have um trish put that out through our social media that at this point we're on hold waiting for the government and between trish and i will touch base with all the groups and just you know have a, a chat about we're hoping and we'll just have to go it's no secret to anybody but so you know it's pretty out there right okay perfect all right let's if everyone's okay with that then um we'll stick with that plan for now okay um okay so we're gonna have trish do her report and try to get in as much before Heather has to leave. Okay, so I'll start with the financial report first. Um, there were no financials provided um, just because uh, 2019 hasn't been closed yet. So the numbers are a little bit skewed when we run the 2020 reports. So I did get a GL, um, the general ledger provided to me so that we could at least have a rough idea of where we're sitting. Um, so currently in 2020, we've spent $568 um, on advertising. So that would be that Wreck and Leisure Guide um, ad that we put in for the shop local and the music in the park, as well as we had to put in notifications about our annual general meeting. So that was a few weeks worth of ads as well. Um, so that went out. There's $126 in meeting expenses. So those would be the food that we provided at our meetings thus far this year. Our OBIA membership was $229. Um, we had to reimburse a business um, that accepted BIA bucks that are not part of our um, BIA. So they had accidentally accepted them. Um, so we just reimbursed them $30. And the last two items are Mitchell Office Pro did the printing of the BIA bucks again this year. So that was about $330 and our constant contact software, which is what I use to um, email our membership. So that was $438. So that's the main expenses to date. Um, any questions on any expenses? Okay, I will jump into my uh, coordinator report. So um, the first thing I wanted to cover off is the OBIA conference. Uh, Heather and I were to go to that conference the uh, third week of April and it was canceled due to COVID. So I've been keeping in contact with the OBIA just to see if they're going to push it um, back or cancel it completely. So right now they're looking at re-hosting it in September. So as more information comes, I'll update the board, but it's kind of on hold. Um, another item we discussed earlier this year was the flower boxes. We submitted a request to have the flowers downtown be blue and white this year for a consistent looking flow through the downtown. So um, this was approved and the, um, uh, the boxes were dropped off at the garden center early April to get made up. So we will have uh, consistent blue and white colors downtown. The membership, so our associate membership um, invoices we sent out late last year. This year we sent them out May 1st um, and we adjusted the due date because usually it goes out with a month due date. We adjusted the due date to September 1st. Um, with their invoice, a letter was sent from the chair noting that due to the pandemic and these trying times, we wanted to give businesses time to make their payment um, as we appreciate their membership. So we just give, like to give them a little bit extra time. Um, so to date, we did lose uh, one associate member this year, but we did gain two new associate members. So we um, gained Scott's Greenhouses in February and Terry's Auto Service joined in April. So the website's been updated to reflect those changes. Um, I also received a notification um, earlier this week from Blows and Stewart Travel that effective May 31st, their office in Mitchell will be closing. So they've consolidated their staff and files to the Stratford office and they'd be happy to serve West Perth community in Stratford or Listowel. Um, they had thanked our community for their support over the years and I replied to Rob Blows thanking him for being part of our community and sent the business closing um, thank you letter that we sent out. An update um, for COVID-19 coverage. So um, some of the stuff that I've been working on since COVID took over was uh, I came to the board to ask about creating a list of our businesses and associates. Um, and it would be a running list where we would provide a, an update on where 
where each business stood, whether they were closed, um, open, offering curbside pickup, that sort of thing. So that list has been updated a few times on the website and I just updated it again today um, because we had a significant change in a few more businesses that opened up fully to the public. So what I have done is if they're fully open to the public, their lettering is now um, green for go. Um, so these are businesses that again are open to the public, they can come in and shop. And if uh, the business let me know that there was certain measures in place, then like a, a limited number of people allowed in the store, I updated that as well, just so uh, they're aware. Um, other things that have happened is I've sent out newsletters. So what I did is I targeted our newsletters to BIA members and associate members only. So general public subscribers, I didn't um, issue them any newsletters. I wanted to keep it very specific to our membership to help support them as best we could. So the newsletters um, had different links to articles with provincial updates. There was a couple letters that came from uh, John Nader in there, updates on our BIA directory, uh, links to West Perth's website, social media, as well as different Perth County initiatives that came through. So they had um, done a couple surveys um, as well as trying to get businesses to update their directory on Perth County's website um, so that that information was clear. And then yesterday I sent a link to the 2020 spring newsletter they sent out. We have eight of our businesses. They are either uh, downtown members or associate members that were um, featured in their newsletter. So that was kind of neat. And then again, social media, different posts on there. We went Facebook Live when um, there was a resident in Mitchell that had had a bagpiper come downtown and play Amazing Grace um, in mem uh, memory of the lives lost in Nova Scotia. So that live video reached over 15,000 people with over 3,000 engagements. So that was um, some nice activity and we were able to help be a part of spreading that um, further. Uh, the last piece I want to cover off is advertising opportunities. So I would like to ask the board for their opinion and ideas on what we can do to help serve our businesses that remain open and those that remain closed. So although the province is slowly reopening, some of these businesses may open um, as part of the final phases. Um, like for example, our hair salons is probably going to be a uh, later in the stages. So the Mitchell Advocate did reach out to me to assist with some brainstorming ideas on how they could help with advertising. So we discussed um, some different ideas and I was given some pricing on purchasing um, like a full page ad and we could we could pay for that ad and then advertise on behalf of our businesses or open the space up to our businesses to place their own business size um, card size ads or we could even just do a generalized shop local ad so that we don't miss anybody, um, just a general broad ad. So I'm just wondering what everybody's thoughts are on um, what, what we would like to do to help support the businesses as we have money in advertising, but we aren't um, currently working on any initiatives right now. I think this is a really important piece of why I kind of wanted us to meet today is, it, it, I think we need to come up with something. We've got a couple new businesses sitting, waiting to open. Um, we have, you know, a business that's decided not to reopen. I think with all of the, the fair, the baseball, corn fest, you know, men's qualifiers is up in the air. We've got so many economic things that are going to, that we usually have a lot of activity coming through Mitchell. I think now more than ever, we need to really see what we can do to support our downtown. Ideas? Thoughts? It's more implementation than uh, my thought when I threw back out the email with the uh, some style of, I hate to say it, but bingo or whatever, but the, it's all about implementation is, is the problem I find with it because how do you make it work with uh, the way things are going? So right. the, the, I thought was a, some kind of a bingo that was more targeted to the businesses that were open, but I, I just not sure how logistic we make it work like if you remember the bingo cards that were sent out from the county mm -hmm. but um, yeah i just not sure logistically how we'd actually make 
make it worse though. But because uh, it's it makes it hard because you can do receipts off each store and then but then it becomes how do you get them to the people and that how do you make the draws work? So mm -hmm. it's not as yeah. easy when you're in this kind of an environment. It's, uh, <laughs> the old days would be just rubber stamp the crazy thing. Meredith, right. jump in. <laughs> yes, please, Meredith. Um, so just in regards to the bingo, it's not it, it's not about the purchase. It's about the reminder of all the businesses that we have locally and to support local. And I think that's what you need to shift your brain and start thinking of how we can support our businesses and remind our residents that more, more important um, than anything else right now is that we support our local uh, restaurateurs, our entrepreneurs, and all of our small businesses. So it's, it's less about what businesses are on there that are open. It's about keeping that engagement piece active and alive. So like we had huge responses on our bingos. We made one bingo card to start with and then had such a great response. We made four more for all of our member municipalities. So it was less about tracking sales and more about keeping that constant reminder that, you know, we come to you um, as business owners looking for donations for our kids sports teams. We come to you looking for uh, prize basket donations when we're fundraising for events. So we're coming to you now, if you're offering curbside pickup and practicing safe social distancing, we're gonna to come to you and we're gonna buy and spend um, our money locally. So I think worry less about the sale and worry, I think what Trish needs to focus on and what the BIA needs to focus on is how can you keep locals, residents engaged. And so I, I'm gonna tell you guys later on and I'll expand more, more on it, but we donated and um, today uh, several thousand pieces of swag promotion, insulated grocery bags, picnic baskets, koozies, and items for all of our businesses that have, had shown interest for a, Perth, a proudly Perth County campaign. And I, I was in Mitchell today delivering stuff to BIA members. So that could use our products to promote, um, to save costs for themselves uh, and also promote our, our brand and just reminding them that we're here for them, whatever they need. So, you know, like a, you don't need to spend a lot of time worrying about um, who's open and who's closed and who's not. You can do find creative ways to keep everyone engaged and always thinking local, um, especially now more than ever, we need to support each other and support our neighbors. And uh, so I think, I think, maybe you just change that thought process a little bit from that spend to, and I think you'll organically see that spend come. So Meredith, do you think an advertising campaign is not necessarily the direction we should go in? Well, I think you can do an, um, uh, an advertising campaign. Absolutely. Um, I just think it needs to be something unique to to the BIA, and I, so don't just do a, a shop local campaign to do a shop local campaign. Do something that's unique to the current situation, that's going to pull at the heartstrings, and you know remind residents that you know what it's worth going to, it's worth ordering extra hair products even though I don't need them right now from the salon just to have in my house, so I can support. Uh, that salon or it's worth making a point of every Wednesday going down to Sugar Maple or BJ's and buying myself a treat more than ever to make sure that that business one sees my face and knows that I'm supporting them or and, and is seeing my money so something unique to Mitchell something unique to your downtown So uh, maybe we could start by, um, I, I know that it's on our website and on Facebook page, who's open, who's not, but could we start with putting that in the paper? I mean, there's, there's a lot of, we have a lot of seniors around that do not look at Facebook. They do not look at a website. They look at their Mitchell paper every week. So maybe we could start there, right? Start with just some awareness of who's, who's around, who's still open, like, they probably haven't been out of their houses, a lot of them, for, I, for a while, you know? Yeah, my only... Start... So, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. 
I was just gonna say my only hesitation with that is that um, it's rapidly changing. So I've updated the spreadsheet a number of times. So if we, I guess if we came up with like a generalized um, ad that we could do, but I'm hesitant to say, you know, these are the places open and not open like I have on the website, it, it could change tomorrow. Could we focus on the ones that are open now to start? Yeah. You know, like put in there that uh, just a reminder, the post office is only open from 12 to four. Maybe people don't know that. Um, it's, which I don't agree with, but um, you know, it's because uh, uh, the bank has changed their hours. Yeah, all, all the banks are on you know, super reduced it, is, hours. Is it something that, that would, I don't know, just remind people that the downtown yeah. is not closed? I, I like Meredith's idea that, you know, we as people come to all the businesses to support our kids' activities or this and that. Now our downtown needs them more than ever. Um, I really like that sort of idea thought as part of the So campaign. maybe have that as the focus. Right? Yeah. We support you. You know, we support you. Now it's time for you to support us. Uh, what about cable TV? Because that's easy to change as well. Yeah, that that's, evolving that's, slide. yeah. A lot yeah. of seniors see cable. A lot, a lot of them do. Yep, they do. Right. Oh, you could you could create part of the static and then always refer back for more details as things are changing daily back to the website, so that you may have what's on there now, but you always know to go back to where it's going to be changing. I have to think about it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Heather. If you think about it, stage one is going to be announced tomorrow, or the plan to head towards stage one. We're not going to make next next Wednesday's paper anyway, so we will have a little more a little more idea of where we're headed for the paper after that. Yes. So I, you know, so you will have opportunity to adjust depending on what gets said in the next two days. We've got until next what Wednesday or Thursday to make the what, adjustments. Right? What if we did a mail mailer instead of um, going through the paper, because then you get all. 4,000 Mitchell and area residents versus 2,000 subscribers or whatever it's down to now and let everybody know like a one page mailer through Canada Post. Yeah, that to me, that's, that's a great idea if, if everyone's on board. Because like Heather said too, the um, older generation too that doesn't have Facebook, um, they might see cable TV, but again, yeah, something in their hand is nice. We just find we get a way better return on investment when we mail stuff out through Canada Post than through the newspapers anymore. And especially if you do drip marketing where you do it like three weeks in a row or one week on, one week off, we get a way better return on investment. And if like if we take Meredith's advice where we don't necessarily focus 100% on what's open and what's not and do it more as a, you know, we support you, we need you more than ever. Because I think we're going to see a lot more over the summer as as all of our events are being canceled. Like I said, as Corn Fest is canceled, as Music in the Park is canceled, as uh, the men's qualifying, the baseball, all of the things that bring extra people to town. I think we're all going to realize how much we actually rely as businesses on that extra stuff as well, not just the regular day to day traffic. You know, the fair, the fair brings thousands of people. If we don't have it, that's a big hit for downtown, you know. So I, I like Meredith's idea of um, let's work on an ad campaign that's more a generic support. You know, don't forget about us and we won't forget about you. So, Dustin, you're sort of a business that's affected right at this point. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I like the idea of tugging on the heartstrings because I think it's a time when everyone understands that. Um, and I don't think it's out of line to do that. But, um, and I like Brent's idea too of going directly to everybody because it, like, it kind of sucks because you're not using the newspaper, which is a local business, right? So that's kind of, maybe not controversial, but um, it, like you are gonna reach more people if you do it directly. Um, and I think doing an honest post, like being proud to be from Mitchell um, and using Mitchell business um, and asking part of it, I think. I would agree. That just, I think that's a good idea. Talking about the paper, Dustin, just reminded me, Trish, what, what's the date? Do you know, we have a July, we have committed 
to a, um, a banner in July for the advocate, right? Is it June or July? So we've committed to a banner that would be, um, I believe it might be the end of June and then the end of July so that we would advert, it was set for music in the park bands in July and then bands in August. So we could, you know, give Trish the direction to change the June banner to be this promotion as opposed to music in the park if it's not gonna happen. So we can still use the paper in that manner. We'll just use it with the banner that we've already, that we're committed to. And we can change the thought that way. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's, it's booked, but we don't yeah. have to really decide on content for like another month, we can start right. working on it. But yeah, I think we have a lot of leeway with that right now, so. Mm -hmm. Bert, did you have something? I, I would go for that, because uh, they're right. Uh, as the paper has shrunk due to the lack of, I hate to say it, but as sports and some of the other activities has disappeared, the Mitchell Advocate has really shrunk. And I think they're gonna, they're one of the businesses that's gonna be really struggling I think, when they come out of this, because as the paper shrinks and there's less people looking at it, there's less people gonna resubscribe to it, so. So a little bit of help their way wouldn't hurt, but it's one of those things I think we have to watch as well, that we don't commit too much that way. Because as Brent said, putting a flyer out is probably a way better way to getting at least 4,000 contacts. And are you guys okay with maybe trying, um, once we get the plan, we try um, the cable TV? Yeah, I, I think we should do cable TV all the time. Like, okay, okay. I'm good with cable. Just there, there's a certain, that, um, that senior dynamic that we're all talking about, they do watch that cable channel. Well, so, the ones that are staying home, I mean, that they're, the TV's on. So, I mean, it's a good exposure point over all the stuff right now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Is there anything else anyone wants to add on that? I think that's a lot, enough for Trish to get started on. Trish, is that enough direction for you? Yep. That's fine. I'll look into cable TV ads. Um, we can retailer the banner ads in the next few weeks. And okay. then I can start to put a draft flyer together to run by everybody. And do you want to draft up a um, music in the park with a, maybe a banner across or just saying, you know, postponed or, or, wait or something? We can maybe yep. start working on that. Just saying we haven't given up, but we're, we're, waiting for direction i don't know we'll work you can we'll work on that sure yep no okay. problem all right good um i think that was it for um trish is it anything else uh no that's everything for me everything for trish yep. all right and we're gonna move no more questions anyone on that we're good all right we'll move on to um economic development and tourism meredith Did we lose you? I'm coming, I'm coming. There we go. Okay. Thanks guys. It's nice to see all your faces. that has been so long since I've attended one of these exciting meetings. Um, and this will probably be the last one I attend for the next year and a half uh, as I'm going off on my maternity leave in a couple of weeks. Um, so, but I did want to give you guys a quick update on what the county has been doing since we do run your economic development tourism program for the municipality of West Perth and it's four member, our four member municipalities across the county. Uh, just in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we leapt into action and launched a business survey on the 19th of March and then a second survey uh, uh, on April 8th. So those two surveys were designed um, to track and have a better understanding of what was happening in our with our current business community. So the first survey, we had 258 uh, businesses across Perth County uh, complete the surveys and we were watching the responses as they came in and we were developing and uh, reacting to the needs of our business community um, instantly uh, as we moved forward into our, our lockdown and uh, trying to help support all of our businesses. So then we launched a second survey just to track to see what types of um, funding was needed, what kind, what, how, how the businesses were actually being affected as we got deeper into the pandemic and into the lockdown. Uh, and then we've also been providing that information to our federal and provincial counterparts. The Western Ontario Wardens Caucus actually reached out to us uh, a few days after we had launched our survey and asked if they could use it as a template and a benchmark for the rest of the Wardens Caucus. So the first survey, nine other 
I think it was nine, eight or nine uh, municipalities across the Western Ontario Wards Caucus, which is, for those that don't know, from Windsor, Essex, all the way to Simcoe County and Barrie, um, and everybody in between uh, used it. And then we had 14 municipalities, the four, four, 14 counties for the second survey. So they used our template um, to, uh, to collect data. So we have a, quite a robust uh, uh, collection of information from our business communities from right across Western Ontario, which is great. So, but we've been pushing our information directly to our um, our federal and provincial counterparts so they can make better decisions for our businesses, especially um, uh, for rural. So that, uh, so survey completed, we start, well, it wasn't even complete, it was still live in action. We developed a resource for businesses page on our website if you haven't checked it out go to perkcounty.ca doing business and um well the link's on the staff report so you can grab scrub link from there uh we then uh and this was actually a continued timing was actually pretty good um because some of the businesses had identified that they were looking for they wanted to keep their um employees engaged and employed and uh, we're looking for some free online training opportunities so like some of the businesses even though it wasn't applicable took advantage of the smart serve um, certification for their employees we actually had a continuation on from our uh cultural competency training last year we had an agreement with fanshawe college to launch uh three uh webinar uh, online webinar series for welcoming communities so we launched that immediately it wasn't actually planning on launching until april but uh, we've had a lot of businesses access that. There is still licenses available, so reach out to Sarah at ecdev at perthcounty.ca. All the information is in your package. If you do uh, want to participate in that training, get a nice certificate. It's Fanshawe College. It's great training. Um, if you are looking for uh, projects to keep your employees engaged or even yourself right now. We then um, kicked it into high gear, I would say, at this point, and we launched our Get Your Business Online training. So. Ashley uh, Brocklebank, as you all know really well, she uh, sourced out training and uh, so the county offered training for businesses. We didn't turn anybody away. We had people from businesses from Huron County, St. Mary, Stratford, Bruce County, and all within Perth County as well participate in those training sessions. And it was to how to get your business online, bring your business uh, online, and then how to like, use uh, finding your target market, advertising with Facebook and Instagram, and then advertising with Google um, and YouTube. So that was really successful. Uh, we also then, uh, after shortly after that, we launched a training resource page for businesses on our website. So this this was a, a kind of it sprouted from the training session of getting your own businesses online. Is that a lot of businesses that identified that they were looking, they were struggling with trying to figure out how to fill out all the paperwork and stay on top of all of the provincial um, documentation that was required to get uh, their employees uh, benefits uh, sorted and uh, wage subsidies, um, support for themselves as businesses. So, so Ashley, Sarah, uh, myself and Maggie uh, have just spent a few days sourcing information of where we could find free training, training for businesses. So. There, it's constantly that page is also constantly being update, updated. Like Sarah is on it multiple times a day, adding more information. It seems like every time there's an announcement, we're scrambling to get that information up, and then update it again the very next day because things have changed. So check out that the the, the training resource page um, on our website. We developed a 19 days and 19 ways campaign uh, to support local businesses, trying to pull at the heartstrings um, and um, encourage. Uh, residents to shop local uh, whilst, whilst um, socially distant, practicing safe social distancing. So uh, we, this actually kind of blew up and we didn't realize it was just a random let's do this on a Wednesday afternoon. And uh, we had multiple municipalities from across the province reach out to us while well, we were in day three and day four asking us for our material because they thought it was such a great campaign and we saw there were a huge uptick um on our social media feeds so from that we did the 19 days in action or 19 ways in action so for 19 days we gave a tip every day if you haven't checked it out again it's on our website you can see it um maybe you guys can steal some ideas for your mailer from there um because we weren't actually promoting specific businesses but we were promoting 
um, practicing safe social distance while supporting local and giving them different op opportunities on how to do it, whether it be spending money at stores or providing a review on Facebook, on Google, on TripAdvisor. And then we did 19 days and 19 ways in action. So we did a call out here and this was an opportunity. I think Sherry participated in it. I know I did um, for and challenged residents and our followers to tell us what they did over the 19 days to support local businesses. Um, we've been doing spotlight on business. This is just a continuation of our regular program, but we've really um, stayed focused on the businesses that are offering um, that are still open and still operating and providing curbside pickups, uh, contactless um, uh, interactions. Uh, so we're really trying to promote those businesses that have really stepped up, um, up their game. Well, that can. So that, that obviously we know that there's businesses that just, there's no opportunity to open right now. It's not safe uh, and they can't. So we're just trying to celebrate those that can and that are. So. Uh, that was one of our uh, one of our campaigns. So that's the regular campaign we run all year long. We've just um, modified it so it's, it's supporting, and we're only promoting those businesses right now that are um, that are currently open. And then we'll we'll get back in the loop the businesses uh, when they are or other businesses that uh, once they're open. And then we did our birth county birth county bingo card. It was a lot of fun, Bert. You missed out on a lot of fun since you missed that memo. Um, and uh, so we did the Perth County one uh, and then our four member municipality one. So this is just really just a way to encourage everybody to think locally, whether it be heading to the wetlands or heading to um, uh, hike a trail, keeping, keeping the planning for the future and just a fun, cheerful Friday afternoon. Um, uh, activity. I, I do have to say we kind of did get a little bit uh, competitive, uh, challenging our uh, local CAOs. Jeff, uh, I'm proud to say, was one of the best uh, bingo players out there. He had lots of cards uh, full of actions. Carla, I'm going to call Carla out today. It was, it was weak. Weak, Carla. Um, so Carla's got some day, day tripping to do with me this summer while I'm off on that leave. Um, Again, keeping our business update, our business uh, directory up to date. So encouraging businesses and you guys can still do it. It feeds into your business directory. So it's a win-win for everybody um, of what businesses are doing in response to COVID and what their modified hours are. It's user friendly. They can do it themselves. If they need help doing it. Uh, they can call Sarah or myself or one, somebody, they can call the economic development line and somebody will help them. So we've launched our video series. Uh, the resilience, I don't know if you've seen them. There's some really good videos out there right now that we've been doing. So our Perth County Proud campaign, um, remembering the tranquility of Perth County. So that one is going to be launched um, on the 15th Friday. Uh, and that's kind of a tour of Perth County from your home. Uh, and we've been doing our how-to videos. So Jillian's uh, was our number, our how-to video uh, for, for this week. So we launch our how-to videos um, every Tuesday. So tune into those. Um, we've got lots of great uh, West Perth businesses on there. So if you haven't checked out Jillian's, it's really good. She's showing you how to decorate, um, uh, do some creative decorating in your house during these times. Um, our, we've done a support local video. And this, is, this was really a video that we ju just wanted to pull at the heartstrings and show our support for all of our local businesses for our front, frontline staff who are in the grocery stores, our, our friends, uh, uh, our paramedics, um, our essentials, it was for our essential workers. So whether that be uh, in healthcare or in our grocery stores or on the front line, uh, we just really wanted to show our support. We did some fun, bright and cheerful Zoom backgrounds, which you can see Sherry's got one of them up. Just keeping everybody engaged. So if you're out, uh, uh, you know, having a Zoom call with your girlfriends on a Friday night or um, I know my husband's playing a lot of online euchre with his buddies from high school. So, uh, you know, throwing up the Perth County backgrounds has been kind of fun, fun practice and keeping everybody engaged. Uh, we modified our newsletter that was launched Monday and it was, a, it was a pivot for, for, uh, COVID. So all that, lots of great resources in there, lots of great training, highlighting all the, like a lot of the businesses that we, 
um, have that are practicing safe social distancing and have modified their businesses to, um, to help accommodate uh, safe social distancing. Uh, we today I dropped off we uh, messaged quietly messaged uh, um, all the businesses that we knew who had updated their business directory to let us know that they were doing um, uh, curbside drop-offs and, and whatnot and we handed out a whole over several thousand pieces of swag items to them so insulated grocery bags um, picnic baskets koozies things that they could use um, right now to help their business and just as a thank you to so because uh, so we know uh, the insulated grocery bags are fairly expensive so everybody was really grateful I dropped off um, some items in Mitchell today uh, our Perth County tourism brochure we're doing a launch a staycation we've had to pivot and modify that uh, they all arrived the week before um, we were all under lockdown so uh, we're have, um, doing a large campaign for Tourism Week, which is May 25th. Uh, so more details to come on that. Um, and watch your mail, mail because we're, we're doing mailers. And we did a photo contest trying to keep everybody engaged, again, just on our social media. So there's great, lots of great submissions that now one, we can use those photos too for future publications. And we um, got lots of people engaged in thinking about all of the great assets that we have across the county. And we have our Perth County podcast series starting next week, uh, fe featuring our very talented Sarah Franklin. She's going to be interviewing and chatting with uh, fellow uh, stakeholders about their programs that are being offered for business, the business community, um, talking with provincial and federal reps. Uh, but there might be some CAO visits in there as well. Uh, so we're just uh, trying to come up with some creative ways to get information out to our businesses, keep them engaged, and uh, let them know that we're here to help. So our door is always open. Our phone lines are always available for you. You guys all have our email addresses. You all have our cell phones. You have our landlines at work. Please reach out to us if you need any support or any help, because that's what we're here for. We work for you guys. Um, so like, don't uh, don't um, don't hesitate to reach out because. Our, our program, our response is, uh, and our recovery is constantly evolving. It's a fluid document. I, um, we're, every day is a new day and a new challenge, and we're just rolling with the punches and trying to help uh, our business community be as successful as I possibly can. So I think that's it for my update. Is there any questions? No, I think because you've pretty much covered everything there is to cover. That's fantastic. You guys have been busy. That's, that's awesome. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Meredith? Uh, what was that podcast called? <laughs> uh, the Perth County Podcast. Yeah. Is that the title of it? It is, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. No, I'm, I'm just going to check that out. Yeah, well, it hasn't really, like, it's so, it, uh, well, Trish, Trish has been, actually, I need to give props to Trish. Sorry, I picked on Carla and Jeff during the session and I didn't get to actually give some mad props to Trish because Trish has been so amazing. Like we literally post something and then she shares it immediately. Um, and she's been so good at being on the ball of sharing all of our stuff. So there's, it's Sarah, Sarah, when Sarah launches it next week, I'm sure Trish and uh, we'll make sure she gets it out. And, and the municipality as well has been so active on social media and getting our stuff out. So, and you can always sign up for our newsletter and you'll get the information immediately from us as soon as we launch it. Perfect. We're really cool. excited about it. Okay, thanks, Meredith. We'll, um, if there's nothing more, we'll move on to Jeff. Rick, you are up. Okay, sure. Um, I'll be real quick. I'm going to share my screen and just run through a few slides if I can share my screen. Yes, I can. Here we go. Uh, can everyone see the screen I'm sharing? Um, hopefully you can. So is it sharing that screen? Can you yes. even hear me? Okay, yeah, good. we can hear you and we can see your screen. All right. Yeah, I should just assume, right? Um, so quickly, I um, want to just mention, uh, I can't say enough, the uh, work that Meredith uh, and her team at County Economic Development and Tourism are doing. Um, I, it just is one of the things that there's a lot to focus on during this event. And, and uh, this is the kind of uh, disaster that um, um, 
we're not picking up after a tornado or cleaning up after a flood. It's really an economic disaster. And, and we certainly, uh, Meredith's team has had um, their eyes on that ball and uh, working on the part of it. As a municipality, we're putting together an emergency recovery plan. And that emergency recovery plan is the next stage of emergency management. And a big part of that obviously is going to be the economic recovery, which uh, will be a, a moving target because the team has been uh, responding to changes as they happen. And uh, um, I, I don't think that part could go any smoother. So um, it's, it's a, obviously a terrible situation, but um, we are trying to support businesses as best we can. Um, I wanna just indicate that the municipal operations are, are continuing as best we can um, we're really uh, trying to, we've got a lot of the operation intact and operating, I, I, I'm not going to say as normal. Um, we are adjusting to the COVID protocols. We have as few people working in the physical office as we can, but we're trying to keep the services going. And for the most part, we're trying to um, have it, uh, those services that can be offered and safely offered for our workers and also safely for our community. Um, we're trying to offer those and the ones that we can't, we've taken them offline and we will bring them back online when we feel that we can make them safe. And so stay tuned. Uh, one of the real flashpoint issues of this event has been access to the landfill. And um, uh, it's a bit of a surprise to me how, uh, how deeply ingrained that is uh, with the community that has curbside pickup. But um, it is, I think, widespread that municipalities are feeling this and we are uh, taking, uh, we're doing planning uh, in order to be able to get the landfill back open to the public, but we will be moving to a, uh, a, a tap and pay kind of approach. So stay tuned for that. Um, Carla, our communications will be doing some, uh, some promotion of that in the next few days. Um, I want to just mention a couple of specific measures. Uh, we are um, encouraging businesses and residents to pay their taxes and utility bills. And, and you might be um, thinking, you know, I, uh, that's a funny thing for me to say, but, you know, we, we certainly want to be there to help people that are struggling. But I don't think we're being helpful if we encourage people to get behind because they still have to catch up. So the message that you're going to hear from the municipality is that we're encouraging people to pay if you can. And if you're struggling, then we would, uh, we'll work with you to connect with the treasurer and come up with a plan. It works for the business or for the, for the residential property or agricultural property or whatever it is. Um, we are waiving fees and interest during the declared emergency. Uh, council has, uh, has authorized that. And we want to do this for all the right reasons uh, of course, it's at risk of being abused, but um, we, we're just trying to message that, you know, we're trying to help in any way we can. And this is a way that, uh, that we feel that we can soften the blow. So um, on the topic of COVID-19 and continued bad news, I want to mention that um, uh, Walter and, and myself were advised of the closing of Continental AG, which uh, many people know locally as Connie Tech and the former... Uh, Cooper Standard, um, pretty disappointed by that closing. And uh, um, we weren't really, there was really no opportunity to, to, to find ways to help. The decision was frankly made um, by the time it got to Walter and I, to Mayor Walter and I, but we have communicated with the company. We've communicated with uh, MP John Nader's office and MPP Petapiece's office and um, we know that there's work being done on retraining and providing access to resources. And uh, we've made an offer to support wherever we can. And uh, that support will come through economic development uh, in terms of any opportunities we see and also uh, through my office here. So, um, I'll try to just do really quick updates on three or four sort of better news stories. Um, Henry Street Bridge, this is a shot today of the uh, uh, pouring concrete, uh, one of our local businesses with the concrete pump there, which is nice to see. Uh, this project is on schedule and uh, uh, should be that that bridge should be opening in the fall. So it'll really change the travel patterns in our community and it will be really good for our community. Um, 
The uh, West Perth Fire Hall project is, uh, was initiated on May 1st as per schedule. Um, we have, uh, we have the uh, photo on the right here is a photo of the site works, which were started on that day. And that photo is as of noon today, they're working on the footings for the fire hall. Um, we are very pleased uh, with, the, uh, with the site management and site maintenance so far. And uh, we haven't had any surprises so far when you're working in a, what is uh, kind of a semi brownfield site. It's not new development area, but there really wasn't ever much on these areas. Um, we haven't found any surprises and uh, we're getting along well. So uh, pleased with that project and uh, we'll have regular updates. Um, the legacy project's completed. It's uh, been seeded and uh, topsoil seeded and there's some stone picking to do out there. So if anybody would like to take a couple five gallon buckets and go out and socially distance and stone pick if you haven't done enough on your own properties there's an opportunity here we're trying to get to it um, but uh, just typical stony topsoil that we got to clean up and then that project we just not let the grass grow and uh, finally I want to give an update about the electric vehicle charging station we've been advised by earth that uh, that they were approved for their project for two electric vehicle charging stations. Um, we heard from uh, council, BIA and economic development that there was a strong desire to get the, the charging stations downtown um, rather than as they were initially proposed by uh, Earth up at the, at the um, community center. Uh, so we've had them looking at the two parking spots in front of the cenotaph there may be a couple technical difficulties with that site so we're just trying to confirm if that'll work or if we're going to have to perhaps look at the corner of Quebec Street and St. Andrew Street as uh, a possible compromise on that location so working on it um, there's obviously the operational but there's also you know in terms of snow removal and things like that but there's also uh, the availability of uh, hydro and the the ease of connection and how much disruption of the infrastructure that's in place. So working on that, um, my hope is that we can make the two sites in front of the cenotaph work, but we may have to go to that uh, other location. And those are um, the updates I have, and I'm certainly prepared to answer any questions if there are any. Um, I know myself, I'm thrilled to hear that it's going downtown. Thank you, Jeff. I'm sure you've had something to do with that. So that's amazing. Thank you for that. Anybody else have any questions for Jeff? Nope, we're good. Um, are we repaving St. George Street as well, Jeff? So um, we received uh, a letter oh, from uh, the Ministry of Transportation last week that we've been approved for a connecting link grant to do a top coat pave uh, from Huron Street uh, for the length of the connecting link. So I believe that'll go all the way out uh, St. George out right. uh, almost as far as Ritz, if not to Ritz. Right, so, from right uh, from downtown then, right? Yeah, right from downtown. So it's uh, the last piece of connecting link that we need to uh, rehabilitate. It's uh, only a top coat, but it's, uh, um, 90% grant um, and I believe our the provincial share of that is uh, north of $500,000 so it's okay. a great injection of cash into our community to improve our yes. roads. and it and this the fact that it'll start at the lights just for downtown do we have a time frame for that it's not going to be a big disruption it'll be nice but yeah um, great, kind of great, time frame? great question we had put it in the budget and anticipated doing it in 2000 and 20 if we got the funding uh so mike kramer has been all over this with the applications and the uh the, the work of making the application and also the work of making the application successful mm -hmm. and those are two different things um and two different unique tasks that have to be done so mike's on that and uh yes we will we will get that project done this summer or in the okay. fall that's good. Just like I said, it won't be a huge disruption downtown, but it will be a temporary just on the main, you know, on that corner as they work yeah. that through. So that's yeah. good. That's nice to hear some good news as we navigate through all this. Okay. Does anybody have any more questions for Trish, for Jeff, Meredith? 
Walter, as he's sitting here, anyone have any questions at all? And I think that's pretty much all that's on our meeting other than the next board, uh, our board meeting. Hello, Walter, welcome. Um, we do need to decide when we'll do our next meeting. Normally it would be the first Wednesday, which Trish is, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Um, yes, so the June meeting, here. yep, sorry, the June meeting scheduled for June 3rd, the first Wednesday of the month. Um, that's just in a few weeks. So we can continue with the um, schedule we've set for the year, or if you feel like we need to alter it, we can definitely alter it as well. I would stick with the schedule if possible. Yes, you're okay with that as well, Dustin. We'll stick with the June 3rd. Uh, Brent? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We just get back on schedule here, just especially if we're going to start getting into a little bit of a, you know, a support, a business supportive program, we should probably, that's only three weeks, is it, Trisha? Sorry, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we should probably move ahead so that Trish can present us her ideas and we can get going forward. Yes? Yes. So June, June 3rd it is then. Okay. Perfect. All right, is there anything else? Walter, do you have anything to add? No, not really. Uh, okay. I just, uh, I, I welcome the opportunity. I've been going to try and attend one of your meetings for the last uh, year and a half or so. So tonight, <laughs> this just gave me the perfect opportunity perfect. to sit in on one of your meetings. <laughs> oh, great. That's good. Um, okay. So if there's nothing else, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, I've got Bert and seconded by um, Dustin and everybody in favor. Yes. Brent? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And we are adjourned. <laughs>